So today we're going to take a look at the answer to chess and the level is the advanced section so we're going to do it in reverse okay so as the advanced as we mentioned when we first started doing it the only real difference was the four move calculation rather than the one two calculation so we're developing the four knights which usually means we're probably going to be behind and let's just bring our bishop out. Well, we can take. There's nothing behind the knight, so the knight can move. So I'm going to take. We can jump to actually attack the bishop, but the knight takes, the pawn takes, queen takes, the rook. If we go here, we can fork us with the pawn and get the bishop, but we take their bishop. So all sorts of things can happen, the knight can take the pawn, etc. Let's go with it. This move causes a lot of confusion. They could go here, they could take our pawn. So they've actually taken, so then the queen can take them, go here. And that was the move order that we discussed in the calculation so it's nice that it worked out okay they really want to push here but I think they'll push here concerned about this pawn because it's by itself and they have pushed there surprised all right so this pawn's going to be pushing down supporting this pawn whilst we're attacking this pawn the bishop probably is coming here and it's not, so we get the pawn for free. Well, it's not really free, is it? Because the rook's just going to come here and they're on our pawn. And we don't have anything to defend that. Bishop has to escape and nothing can come and support. So the greedy munching bishop. As it caused us a good position on the board, probably we can come here, the rook takes, and then we can lock the rook in, which is going to be a bit annoying for them. So they'll do a bit of a panic attack and try and get try and get the bishop off somehow. Let's lock it in. Got a two on one here. Got two on one protection with the bishop and the king. It's a bit frantic this game, but we're looking at dealing with this as the answer to chess in the advanced section. And they have moved, so we could can't attack the rook yet. We could go here, but then he takes our rook. We could hit their bishop, which I'm going to do. Keep it simple. I'm going to hit the bishop again. Rook is looking to try and escape. Bishop's probably best going. Oh, that's a shame. Right, so we're going to hit the rook. But the thing is, if we go and hit the rook, the rook comes here and takes the pawn, doesn't it? So if we put a check on his king, just to get the bishop out, we may get castled, but his bishop's going to come and put a check on. We do have the bishop being able to attack. So the rook is going to escape. Don't want the rook escaping. We could just hit the rook, but he can always drop down. Or we can hit the rook just here, but then we get taken. We could just put a check on the king with our rook. And he hides into the corner. Then the king can hit the rook. He's trapped. No, he's not, because he can go here. Go here. That might be a funky way of doing it, eh? Check on the king. But maybe the king comes and attacks the rook. But then we have to move the rook again. Yeah, I'm thinking it's running away, but it can potentially go there or just come and attack the rook. 
it attacks the rook on a dark square and we can't really do anything else so that's the bad that's the bad place that they can go which messes up our rhythm of going and attacking their rook hmm anything else can cat oh well that does have a check on the king so he has to move we're assuming he may go here or something So the rook can't go and get the pawn just yet. I don't think we're getting there, rook, are we? Then we go and castle. We go and castle. Hmm. Let's put the check first. Let's take it a step at a time. Don't want to confuse the calculation. We did a one, two, we looked at a three and four, but we don't really know what's going to happen. That's why I don't really like doing too big a calculation. It's a kind of a waste of time if you don't. So they've gone here. All right, so we do have an X-ray through to their king. We still do have the rook coming here. So we could follow that process. Because they're going to try to chomp to come and get this pawn. Check on the king. It's not coming here now because the bishop has got them guarded. I'm not sure they'll want to go onto a dark square, so maybe they'll come onto a white square. That gives this pawn bishop can take, but we're not doing that because the rook will be taken. Now, do we castle? Rook, check. King here can always go here, like we said, but he'll lose his rook. I'm going to go up one step at a time because it is a check. I don't think it's disrupting our position too badly. He does have a check on our king and our rook off the board. I'm very mindful of that at this moment. Just seeing where they're going. We're hoping they'll go there because we can get the rook off the ball, but they're not. They've gone there. So we can castle. Does castling look good now? Because this pawn is a bit free. We would be on their rook. But we don't want to lose ours. I mean, our rook can come back and defend. We go here. Only problem I've got is that this white square bishop's going to be putting a check on. And if we do this, the rook can take our bishop. So that's why I don't really want to castle. Really wanted the king to attack their rook, but I'm going to be able to take this pawn. Anything else? Move the pawn and attack the bishop. Does it give it a good square though? Could just come and attack our rook, couldn't it? come here it attacks our rook we drop and attack it but that's not it's not major and he can just drop and get our rook off the board we'd have to just come back down and defend right what is the next move I'm don't really want to take that Well, I suppose we could just move into the corner, can't we? So if we did castle, brings the bishop here, can move the king into the corner. Rook is still a bit jammed in, but it looks like it might be escaping. 
I want to give them invaluable because we're still going to be on this pawn. After he's done that, we'll move the king, but then maybe the bishop attacks or something. Let's castle. We know it's coming. Their rook is currently currently out of the game. We were looking at hitting their bishop, but it seems to be giving them a bit of strength coming here. Trying to stay away from that for a brief moment. Rook's on the pawns as well. Not thinking of greedy munching just yet, if we can get the king. He's gone for it. Let's push. We don't need to delay that. That was the major concern. And from there, we don't know where they're going to go. Only other options are like things like this, or maybe bringing the rook across here to try and support the rook. But the bishops are covering there at the minute. But that's the only deadly strike, I think. For them to give us something to think about. And as we said, we can take the pawn here. We're really interested in trying to get this king. Well, that's the that's the bonus one. Hit the rook. Where does it go? It's got a safe haven here because the white square bishops cover him. But they might do that instead. So the more advanced level thinking is looking more at your, your position properly. And the beginner stage obviously is just getting used to the pieces, the, what they can do, where they can move, that type of thing. And then inter intermediates is working your pieces more together as a team and using maybe the one, two calculations. So the, those are the differences in the beginner stage. Get used to the pieces, how they move around the board, that type of thing. and see what relationships they have with each of the pieces and what what squares and spaces they like on the board and intermediate you're really then putting it all together yeah so the spaces the pieces the relationships with each other and the relationships with the opposition's pieces and trying to get them working as a, a proper team um continuing with like maybe a one two calculation type thing so he's gone protecting the bishop. He's gone pre so we can take the pawn, but maybe there's something else we can do. We can take this. I don't think I'm going to be a fan of this if he's doing this, but is, does that make it bad for us? Even if he does. We're hitting the rook. Rook comes here. We take. The bishop takes. The bishop's now over here. We've got to be mindful that his rook could come down and go for a back ranker. Might be a nice position for them as well. But what can we do in the meantime? Because the bishop would be here, managing this square. The rook's already here. So if his rook was thinking of coming round here, we're just going to be hitting him with a checkmate, aren't we? I think this bishop will go for the exchange, which kind of messes stuff up. So what are we doing? Are we going with this bishop attack first? Because it's on the rook, but then the rook just comes and attacks it. Or it comes here, getting ready for a back ranker. I think we should hold on to that, hold off on that one. And just bring the bishop here. Because that looks more devastating towards the king. But as we said, the bishop's probably just going to come here and spoil the party. But if it does, we can take the rook off the board and then the bishop can take the bishop. Is that the way we're wanting to go, maybe? Yeah, that would work. We'd be up the exchange. 
not that that means a right lot to me being up the exchange because it's really how you use the use the pieces you might be really good with the two bishops and the rook or changing mindsets certain circumstances might warrant having the two rooks on the board and they might be deadly and other times having the two rooks might be an absolute waste of time you know a case in point if it's like locked down there's no open files for the rooks to play with you're going to end up um, sacrificing them for a better position we're waiting for this to spoil the party hope it doesn't but you know or like we're saying they may just do this type of thing to get rid of this rook to keep the rook safe or they might sacrifice i think it's too early for any of that I'm just conscious looking at the time, 9 minutes, it is a 15 minute 10 second increment game. Oh my god, they have sacrificed as well. Okay, have we fallen into something? Just be steady then. Because we've not reckon we did mention it, tongue in cheek. But we didn't expect that, so he's gone defending, so we can go for the checkmate, can't we? Ouch. Very smooth. So that's advanced level type of answer to chess in my world within our conceptual ideas of um, our mantra. Okay, this is the intermediate answer to chess session workshop conceptual idea practice. And in the intermediate, as we mentioned, um, as we've mentioned in the past, it's more a focus on trying to work the pieces together as best possible. And and the calculation side of things is like probably one, two. You don't really want to extend past there and just look at a quality one, two type of calculation. So we're just basically attacking the knight. More, there's going to be more one calculation than anything else, but then if you're extending it, it you're going to, for the two. So play it safe, don't overexert the brain, just take it nice and steady. So we're going to take the knight off the board. Let's just open up the dark square bishop. See if we can get the bishop out. Maybe we're going to bring the bishop here, supporting the knight, because the bishop may come and attack not going to be coming here anymore based on the position they've got but let's just bring the bishop out and see if we can get castled on the king side it's looking it's then attempting really to try and understand what the opponent's teams are doing and their relationships with their pieces and just working your pieces together trying to not go too far with any of the um candidate type maneuvers because that then over expands your uh, calculation so we're going to go one because it's reversing and then attacking the bishop obviously the bishop is going to take the, um, the bishop but we're going to attack it just to give them something to think about and take with the queen so in the intermediate you really really simplifying and just trying to not get into any complications of anything because you're just getting used to the pieces how they work together and basically the relationships with the rest of the board the pieces the squares the, the spaces and that's what you're really really doing within the answer to chess in the intermediate type of stages if you try and run too fast you're going to not develop so you have to have certain stages in mind so we've got a one attack on the on the knight which should be okay if they do capture because the queen is supporting they don't have to capture you know they can do whatever they're wanting to do and they've captured so we'll capture with the queen so at this stage we're just trying to find comfortable positions but not over egging anything always for the b pawn so the rook can actually protect the um, pawn or we can push up just the queen is going to drop here and it's going to have an x-ray through to our king 
So let's just bring the rook and support the pawn. There is the opportunity to attack the queen and jump into this position here. We do have an out for the um, knight coming back again. But they're actually blocking that off. So where are they looking really to come with the queen? Are they doing anything with the queen? Stopping the castling. So we can bring our queen and just attack their queen. A simple one move calculation. Just having a look at what the opponent is trying to do. Understand the relationship between what it is they want and what it is we want. You're not going to want the same things. So you then have to understand, well, okay, if they want X, Y, and Z, then is that X, Y, and Z really stopping my whole development of anything on the board? And if so, I need to do something to stop that so that I can be happier on the board. Not going for the exchange, but like we said, we can attack the queen with the knight. So we're back again to that type of position. And then we can sit the knight here and we've still got a good out here if we're going to do that. I'm going to bring the knight, smaller piece attacking a higher piece. So they're doing a lot of work with this queen. And I'm, I'm feeling, I'm feeling they're going to get it trapped, but they've still got loads of outs. So like we mentioned, smaller pieces attacking higher pieces, you're usually going to get some sort of reaction. If we push this pawn on, it's going to have to do something. I think they're going to jump back there. So they know we're going to hit it with this smaller piece. But well, they're going to go out because they're going to feel some pressure. If they keep this, it's not really, in my head anyway, it's not really a good thing for the queen to just keep blocking this pawn. Uh, okay, like we just said. Um, so we can push here. If they take, then the rook takes. It's on the queen. So it's not really a good thing. So we can go here, but I think they'll just push past on this occasion. What's my queen doing? What's my king doing? Let's castle. Because at the minute that's all they're doing, so maybe the queen's coming here and they're going to start pushing. So they've got the little finchetto thing. So this type of position that the opponent's got here, they could stay there forever and a day. It's like saying, well, I'm safe. So the queen has moved, so they're going to be looking to charge down. So like I said, we can bring the knight across. They may bring the pawn here just to stop the knight from jumping here. So I would class that as baiting the pawn in a sense. It's making them do something they don't really want to do. And we can always bring the knight back. Or we can just simply hit the pawn, but as we said, it's just pushing past. But if he pushes past this time, the knight can take. So I'm actually going to hit the pawn. I suppose he could have taken, even if the queen was there. So as the intermediate, one, two calculation. Now we have to have the option of taking with the rook or taking with the pawn. Bringing the pawns more in line is probably better, safer, but we have to move our knight out of the way. So either bringing it to the side here so we can link the pawns up, are we going to have that time? Or do they just block? Obviously, there's this type of situation as well, but I'm going to hang fire on all of that. We have a situation brewing. It's going to be a bit sad. Yeah, they're attacking the pawn with the queen. The rook's defending at the minute. So if we want to get this knight activated, no, I can come here. I can come here. Rook probably coming to attack it. We can sit it here. Or we can sit it here. It's probably sitting better here. So all we're wanting to do is get these pawns linked up. Okay, so they've come down anyway. So let's just drop the knight into this lovely spot. Only piece that can take it is the bishop, really. So the bishop will have to come out of there, out of its little shell at some point. 
Now ownership of the only open file is going to be key. And I think as in the in the intermediates, it's really understanding the you know the very basics of chess, the simple things like rooks owning files, you know, the better positions for the knights in the center of the board. And pawn break mentality when to when to make a pawn break and when not to and that's not 100 percent proof either when you're doing pawn breaks but you can keep practicing it even in the advanced bit you're still going to struggle with the pawn breaks when to do it and when not to do it but it's trial and error to find your own style as as and when you want to date make a capture make a move you develop your own style not don't try and play like somebody else because that won't work the uniqueness becomes because it's you so i think they will be running to actually try and own the file and they're not doing that yet all right so we said we were going to push this but maybe we'll go and get ourselves set let's get ourselves set on the open file as we've just been harping on about the basics of chess that's one of the basics. They do like open files, not necessarily when the bishops and the rooks and the nat are blocking the area, but it seems fairly flexible enough to start maybe start positioning. So now the answer to chess. What's the answer to chess all about? Putting pressure on the king or the king area or the area, you know, the pieces around the king. This is what the our opponent is doing. Yep, they know we're coming around this side here. Now they're saying, I'm going, I'm coming for your king. Gone right opposite your queen, your king. Nobody likes that. So we can start attacking. Because we know this simple calculation is coming into our area. We don't want them there. So a small piece attacking a higher piece can't be wrong. So if we continue coming here there might be something that they can do with their bishop i don't know but i don't want to take that chance so whenever you get a sniff of somebody around your area in your half you have to try and attempt to try and get them away knight's okay could put a little bit of pressure on the rook but we're not doing that that's just putting that in my back pocket yeah just scanning the board only piece that is scary at the minute is the queen could bring the queen here to see if we're going to double the pawns because it's been a lone ranger at the minute what is it really doing there small piece could attack the um, queen i think we'll do that stick with simple is it sinking in here queen comes here go for a trade just chase it around a bit So as you can see, we're doing simple moves. It's not guaranteed for anything, but we're just simple one step, two step moves. Any piece that comes into your half, try and see it off if you can. He yeah, is going for that. So I'm going to just bring the queen here and go for this, like we said. So that's a simple one step calculation, which we've, we've done prior. So really it's like a two-step calculation because they've actually done what we've calculated and now they've moved we don't didn't know where they were going to move from there so now we're in a new range of calculation and my brain's going straight away to hitting this pawn here because we have the knight and we have the queen yep so if we push this pawn the pawn takes queen can take because it's got the support of the knight only problem is, is the bishop is also going to be hitting this pawn, so they get that for free. But we may as well push this pawn to support this pawn. Slows down the process a little bit, yes, but we have to be aware of what the move order of things are, and how many pieces are attacking which pieces, how many squares are being defended by um, the opponent's pieces. Or else then you lose out 
So the queen's come right around the back attacking this pawn here. When really, um, all the rook has to do is come here. It's going to have to go back anyway. Not, they're not using their pieces together as a team, which is good, and I'm glad for that. I'm happy for that. So we do win the tempo. They're going to go back to where they came from. And so we will be able to push the pawn up onto the queen. Pawn takes. Queen takes. Queen probably taking. Then the knight takes. And that's a lot of, that's a lot of steps there. <laughs> okay. But we'd covered it as a 1-2 prior to the queen coming down here. There's no... I don't see any major movements. It's got no support with anything. I, I think it has to come back here and suffer the consequences. But they may not suffer the consequences. They may do something totally out of... Yep, so I'm going to push and see what happens. That's our calculation. Pawn takes, queen takes. Straightforward. Or that he doesn't take with the pawn at all and just moves the queen out of the way. We didn't factor that in. But they have done. So we will take. Again, they don't have to take. They can move. We are on this pawn if they don't take. One step, two step calculations. I think for me. Oh, that didn't get factored in at all. What is that? Oh. So we take. And does the rook take? I don't understand that. Because if the rook takes, we just get the rook for free. So they've just given their bishop up. Doesn't look like it's for a better position in any way, shape. No, they've broken my concentration and I was just monologuing and um, I've actually forgotten what I was talking about. Yeah, so that's what happens, you know, when you do your calculations and you go too far and then they do something that you don't expect. Your brain genuinely just gets jolted and it's like, hey. Is that really happening? So now I'm while I'm talking, I'm thinking, have I missed something and I'm going to get mated in the next move? I genuinely can't see it, which I'm thankful for. Oh my gosh, they're not exchanging. <clears throat> they're not exchanging, but we can't go and take the pawn because he's going to take this pawn here. Oh, that's annoying. That's annoying. So now we probably bring the rook here and just support the pawn. There's no other attacks on the queen. Can attack the rook, but the rook will go down and then that allows his other rook to come into the game. Okay, let's go simple. Just supporting the pawn. Understanding the relationship within our, with our pieces, what pieces need help, and so they're not giving this queen up at all. This queen has done loads of dancing in this game. They've given up the bishop. They're probably trying to get doubled here. Our rook potentially can come around here and start hitting this, or the queen can take the pawn. But they're looking to get put a check on our king, aren't they? Looking for some repetit. Do we not get the king to come here a little bit? And see it off. Because he's in our half of the board. So potentially the next move, if it's not a good one from them, is our king coming here. So we don't need to take, but we are ahead materially. So you think we could just take it off the ball, but then his rook is owning this file. And as we mentioned, owning the file with the rooks is key. So shall we just continue with the small plan of trying to harass their queen? Yes. 
unless of course his queen takes the rook, rook takes. No, he's not going to do that. Let's bring the king up. So the basics of chess we've covered at the minute. Uh, we've looked at move order of things and um, smaller pieces attacking higher pieces to make them do things they don't really want to do. We've sent the queen all across the board and they've sacrificed the bishop. And they're now attacking our queen which allows us to do what we wanted to do which is this and get the queen off the board. So I don't think he's got any other spares, squares that he can go to now. So he's going to have to exchange the queen. And that's marvellous. Can't go here because he's trapped himself in. Can't go there because the queen will take him. Can't go here. Can't go there. So that was a long time coming. But as you could see, the development was nice and steady. One step, two step calculations. Really understanding the relationship on the board between the spaces and the key areas around our own pieces in, in terms of supporting them and developing appropriately, not just for the sake of it, developing for proper reasons. Is it attacking a higher piece? Is it defending our pawns? Is it attacking their pawns? Are we putting numerous pieces in defensible positions? And do we have good counter-attacking positions? So this game kind of had all of that in there in order to, for us to find the improved position that we've got at the minute using the basics of chess. And it doesn't come easy, but I'm, yeah, there we go. We'll take, it doesn't come easy, but I'm monologuing and, you know, the game is still going on. So I'll just stay quiet and just focus on the game. We are attacking the pawn here. Obviously, we're facing off their rook at the minute. But ownership of the file is key. Try and resist it. Sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. But because I don't have any other support, if I take, excuse me, if I take now and his rook takes, he's got all this power down here. You could say, well, yeah, I can bring my rook up and that type of thing, but I'm actually just going to take this pawn. Yep. So the rationale is I don't want to take there because he's going to own the file and he's just given us our rook because we've got the fork with the deadly knight. Let's capture in. All right, let's take. Hope the knight's not trapped. So he's down attacking the pawn. Rook could go and put a check on. It's so eager to just put a check on the king sometimes that he might not get the um, improved position. Comes there, come across protecting the pawn. Can't come here because the knight's protecting. But he can go here, attacking the rook. And then we can go here and take his rook off the board. That might be a move. Might be more than two steps, but we'll put the check on. Might not do any of that and just go there, but I'm assuming they're going to go here. Oh, it's gone there. It's not come close enough. We'll bring the rook here and protect the pawn. So we think. It does have this thing, but no. So these types of endings can be lost as well or drawn when you think you're winning. Got to be mindful of that. It's coming around for this pawn, actually. Knight can defend, but then it's going to get attacked. Can we hit this pawn? Do we have any check? good checks on his king, really? Check. Down. I really wanted that one. 
you know, with his king being there, but that's not going to happen. I better stop flicking on there. Position checks. Check. He hides in this corner. We're not interested in that. Now I'm going into overthinking mode when I don't really need to overthink. I could just push this here, couldn't I? If he pushes past, then we can do something. Let's just get rid of these pawns if we can. We can trade down. Shall we take with the rook? Then we're attacking his pawn. That makes sense. But then if he does come here, it's going to be too late because we'll get this pawn off. Putting a check on the king, but we'll just come here with our rook. Attacking. And we'll take, like we said, now we're going to be supporting the pawn. Somehow I want to make sure my knight is safe. There's nothing. I need to get it sitting on this. But for now. And let's get our king to safety in a little cubby hole here. So they're still playing on. They're looking to do some sort of uh, magic. Let's get the knight here. Sacrifice the knight if I have to. If he does push, it's not really a sacrifice because the king can't take. I think they will attack the knight. Gives us space to push the rook up a bit, supporting small incremental movements with the pawn. And they have done. So we'll just have to just bear with me if we just take with the pawn. Got a check, but then he moves across. Don't really want that. Let's go here. So now the knight is fairly safe. We were searching for somewhere where it could sit. And the king's not got a hide away from the rook. So we can go flying up here, push, 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 push. Although the king has to stay on this side, on this rank. So we don't get the um, <coughs> rook and then promotion thing. But I know for me, be very careful when you're in these types of end games where oh you know exactly now what you want to plan to do and you do it too quickly and then you end up missing out on something or making a bit of an error or you're in a bad position somehow so really savor the moment i've still got to practice that savor in the moment and then i've got to understand about when i'm savoring the moment looking to see if there is genuinely something different or better and it might not be a draw after all that. But they're wanting to open up so that the rook can put, put in checks on the king. But I'm not really wanting any of that. We can put a check on the king if we really wanted to. I'm just going to put the check here. Like we said, just take time with it and look at what it is the opponent's attempting to do they're wanting to try and blast this open so uh, oh looking for stalemate type stuff so we could go here but that's not going to work because i get checkmated <laughs> if we push up a little bit more then we're gonna it's not necessarily a mate if we go there because you can get out of the way we might as well just go here and push the pawn up so that's the plan does capture and we will take with the pawn as the guard are against the rook rook's going to come down so it can come across but we can just do this so i'm not going to panic about that the king's probably looking in here to try and get this pawn So they're coming down. So we know that that's the case. The king is looking to come here. So we could bring the king here, but then he's going to be looking for that draw type thing of us jumping backwards and forwards. And I don't really want to wear them apples. 
So let's get the king out of there. Again, he can just go backwards and forwards looking for that draw type thing. Yep, so if we go here, then he's just going to go back again. Oh, he's not doing that. All right, that's good. So that was a successful getaway of the king. So now at least he's not coming in here. Now the rook has to go back or something. Gives us time to start pushing. Although he's going to have the checks on our king. We're coming back here again. They'll be going down, up, down, down, down. But the pawn will eventually get up with that type of maneuver. It's patience. That's the thing. When you're in these types of end games, it's that patience. And your brain will be going, oh, I'm winning, I'm winning, I'm winning. But the opponent is doing things to keep on pressing on you, stopping you from doing it. Yeah, so you're inching up a little bit at a time. Oh, he's got small potatoes. All right, let's push. So this is going to be the annoying thing. Oh, it's brought, bringing the king back around. So we've got the paw moved up once. Yes. But let's put the check back on again. I think this time he... Oh, no, dude, what you done? That's checkmate. Thank you. Excellent. So that's the intermediate answer to chess, the one two calculations, working the relationship of your pieces together, trying to manage those key spaces, key areas, and really keeping good understanding of basic chess. And that should stand you in good stead, you know, understanding those concepts. answer to chess beginner level so as we know it's just understanding what the pieces can do how they move and just take pieces off the board yeah as a beginner just get used to that um feel of the pieces and their motions and you see an opportunity to take a piece off the board that feels fairly safe take it off the board Smaller pieces attacking higher pieces, like the pawns attacking the queen and the pawn taking the queen um, should be taken quite nicely. Bit of surprise there actually. And shall we just develop pieces simply and let's castle. But don't try and go into too technical a thing with um, being, being a beginner. Just attack pieces they've got two pieces here we've got two pieces defending if we hit this pawn if they don't do anything we can take the pawn so we're going to hit the bishop with the smaller piece so we'll take the bishop off the board this person's playing at the right level for this um this seminar this workshop so there's a free piece here, so we can just capture this piece, can't we? It looks like their signal may have gone. But that's the idea of the answer to chess in the beginner stages. It's simply just getting used to the feel of the pieces, how they move around the board. And if you get that opportunity, take a piece off the board. Just get used to that feel of taking a piece off the board. Try and make sure that it's a safe capture-ish, you know. Um, don't get too bent out of shape if, you know, um, it's not. But if you can understand that, oh, I, I think I can take that one safely because nothing else is actually defending it, then take it off the board and just get used to the way the pieces move around the board. It's as simple as that. As a beginner in chess, the answer to chess is is probably a one calculation that you're going to do don't think too much about calculation really think about the movement of that piece can i take that piece off the board safely how do the pieces move around how do they relate to each other the bishops the queens the rooks how do i support my pieces yeah so that's the type of thing you'll be doing as a beginner in the answer to chess